we have seen the syntax in the objective C. Now we want to see the most important components of the objective C. If you got hands on on these two components which you are going to discuss right now, I would say you have got the core knowledge of the objective C. And now you want to see the real wow factor. Now the most important topic which you are going to cover right now will be properties. Properties. Now before you go into properties, uh, I want you guys to ask yourself a question saying what do you mean by properties or when I say variables, what someone say they are, we can call properties as a member variables, their attributes. So a state of an object can be called a member variable, a property or an attribute. And when I say uh, if you declare a roll number in S1, you will access S1 dot roll number equal to 5 or you can have 8 s1 dot roll number so out here dot operator x as a setter whereas here it acts as a getter so basically a property is nothing but a getter and setter for your variable so properties and member variable are different things when someone tells me oh property and variable is one and the same thing, they are two different things. Member variable is a state, whereas property is a function, they are behaviors. So, a getter property will get the current state of the variable, whereas a setter property will gonna give set the new state for the variable. So, a member variable is state, whereas a getter and setter is nothing a variable, but it's a property. So, when you say property, they are methods, they are the behaviors. The speciality of those are that they work on a state. They give the proper value to the state and take the value of the state of state. Now, if you take any normal language, suppose you declare 2000 variables, you can access all your 2000 variables using dot operator. That means 4000 getters and setters have been created. Whether you want it or you don't want it, they have been created. So, out of those 2000 variables, you say 1500 variables have nothing to do with anything. They are for inter manipulations. They are not supposed to be exposed or you know, they are not supposed to be used by the dot operator. But even though getters and setters are being created. So your 3000 functions are already implemented in your code without you wanting to do that or not. One drawback. Second drawback is that Suppose I have out of those 500 variables, I want 300 to have read and access, whereas 200 should have only read only access. I can't do that. I cannot say I can only create getter and I don't want to use dot operator at setter level. Not allowed. Now there where the objective C and Apple comes with a wow factor. It allows you, so in objective C, when you declare roll number as a state and you try to access using dot operator, it want to crash. Say getters and setters not found. The signature for these variables are not found. So that means by default in other language variable can be called as a property to the class because getters and setters are already being created whether you want it or you don't want it. But in objective C it's all explicit. You have to tell whom you want to make getters and setters and for whom you don't want to make. So suppose out of 200,000 variables, I say 1500 variables, I don't want getters and setters. That means your 3000 functions have been deleted. So, your performance and everyone knows line of code is also one attribute for your performance. So, here it can show big Apple products have a better software. You can say a software in a Macintosh environment runs very efficiently because the optimization has been done at the core level of your programming. So now they are more secure because you decide whether you want to have an access to a dot operator or not. Now suppose there is some variable which you want to make it publicly available but you want someone, some other class cannot set that value. You will say make the property greed only. So a getter will be allowed whereas setter it is not, even though the variable is publicly available a dot operator will only be operating on getting the value where a set operator a wow factor security is enhanced so there where the property comes handy in the objective C now we are going to see 
how both these terms which we saw the drawbacks in other languages where characters and sentences are created and how you can have a property which is only read only and not the read uh, only with read only now you have the student at the read interface or an ns object You have some variable declaration. Now the property, or you can, I have to be more precise in saying it roll number and a string say name. Now these are the various state in your as in I decide. I want getters and setters for the roll number, whereas I don't want getters and setters for the name. So that means explicitly I will tell, okay, make roll number as a property to a class, whereas name should not be a property to a class. It will be a pure member variable. So if any class or any object of any class try to access name using a dot operator, it will get crashed. So how do you declare a property? Now see, a property is something behavior. It comes in a section of method. Therefore, a property declaration will have will be away from your curly braces. So, how you want to declare? There is an annotation called add the weight property, compiler predictive. In bracket, you want to have some magical terms, which you want to control your getters and setters, which you want to take later on, followed by the declaration of your so followed by the declaration of your variable now with this line you want to tell the compiler okay boss roll number is no more the member variable of the class but it also is a property to the class so a dot operator can be applied on it now so we gonna see it now if you see there's a redundancy you have declared a variable again and then you declare a property again now X code is a new XDK, it's a new ID, sorry. So X code is getting evolved. With a new X code, if you declare a variable as a property, you don't need to declare this. But in the previous version of X code, if you declare only a property, it would have given a compile time error saying signature not found or the identifier missing or something like that. So in new X code, recent X code, it's allowed if you create a variable name as a property, you don't have to declare it. So it's getting evolved. So Xcode is also improving day by day with the suggestions. This is a part of your declaration where you declare at the right property, in bracket you have some magical terms and followed by the variable declaration. So now the roll number is no more member variable but a property of a class. You have now we want to go inside the implementation block. Because say student dot edge. We want to have at the rate implementation. Student. Now by default, by default, the uh, compiler expects you to implement getters and setters. And I would say if I have to create a property, the only reason I'm creating a property so that I am getting rid of getting say getters and setters. So I don't want to create getters and setters, therefore I want to make it property. But if you want compile or the system to create the getters and setters on your behalf, you have to mention at the rate synthesize followed by the variable. So when you write synthesize roll number, compiler comes to know, okay, I have to create getters and setters for this variable. So getters and setters are created, but by default, he expects you to create. So if someone declares a property in a dot edge, and if he doesn't declare this, a compiler will give a warning, whereas a runtime error will occur when you try to access dot operator, because the signature is not present in your implementation block. So whenever you want compiler or run system to create getters and setters, you have to mention synthesize. Now you say, no, I want to create getters and setters.
you want to create getters and setters by your own, the st standard way of creating the signature or the implementation block because the declaration is already done in dot h so the implementation the syntax or the function signature should be same now suppose how if you want to implement getter getter it, now it's at instance level the getters and setters are the instance level they are not at a class level therefore there will be always a minus sign now return type of your roll number was int so i want to say int and the getter signature will be same as the variable name so it will be roll number I will say return roll number so this is the type of signature which gets created and if you want to implement your own signature you have to make sure it's minus followed by the return type of the variable followed by the variable name and return should be a type of the variable so I still find funny when in my school days when teacher used to say create a class student and say get roll number set roll number now I am but getters and setters are already been created so when you say a dot operator applied on either side of minus equal to sign getters and setters are getting created call so uh, if you go back to your school textbooks or when you started programming it's always told in a function the characteristic of the function name how a function name needs to be declared there is one thing which everyone says as a return is that a function name can be same as your variable name now it signifies getter so if a function name has a return type as the same as your variable it acts as a getter i never tried on java or the c++ platform to see whether the control comes to such signature or not but in objective c if you implement such signature and write the log statement out here and you try to access the variable using dot operator your control will gonna come in this signature now how do you write the setup minus 9 as it's a uh, part of the instance void because setter is just to set the values it, uh, it start with set as it's small followed by the first letter of your variable will be capital and rest will be same so the sen case sensitivity of other character will be maintained as it is but the first letter of your variable will be uppercase colon argument with the type of the variable I say where and you want to have roll number equal to where so whenever dot operator is being called at the right hand side of the equal to sign the control comes to such signature in your implementation block of that particular class so we have understood the one of the most important advantages in the performance where in terms of getters and setters so it's we who decide oh i want getters and setters or i don't want now the second point which we decided out of 500 properties i want 300 to have say read write access whereas 200 will be read only in order to have that flexibility in your getters and setters basically you have attributes so if you remember when we declared a property we had a blank we had a rounded bracket and I told there will be some magical terms coming inside there. Those magic, magical terms are called attributes to the pro class. So to attributes to the member variable. So depending upon the pro attributes, the getters and setters are created. Or you can say attributes to the property, how property will be acted on, how getters and setters will be created. Now, before we go into those, in detail of those attributes, we want to list down the set of attributes provided by the objective C. So, among the set of the attributes, you have to select one. So, we want to say, first set is read, write or read only. Second set is assign retain or copy third set is atomic non-atomic 
fourth side is strong or weak. So these are the four set of attributes which one have to declare or one have to define when he creates the property. Now, the first one is very simple. Read write, read only. So if you say declare an attribute, say read write for the property roll number, get as and set as needs to be created. Whereas if you say a property attribute should be a read only, only getter will be created. Setter will never get created. When you do synthesize or whenever you implement it only expects you to write only the get. Now out of these two, if you don't mention any of those attributes, it will take read write as default. Here, yeah. so it's very straightforward. It's applicable for pointer type of variable, it's applicable for the primitive type of variable. Every variable in your Objective-C can be have a, this attribute. Now we're gonna come on to the second set of the attribute which is called assign, retain or copy. Now, you say assign or retain or copy. Now, this type of attributes are applicable for the Objective-C type of variable. So basically, our pointers are coming into picture. Now, before we go inside this attribute, we let's have a clear idea of what is pointers. Now, when we say pointers, pointers are the most essential component in a programming language when it comes, comes to the memory management. We all are pointers in this ecosystem. Now, suppose we say we all are sitting in a classroom, sharing. Sharing is the most important part in this today's world. Everything we do, we share with each other. Just imagine if a baby boy or baby girl gets born and he starts living in his apartment, his own apartment on the first job it's born. Is it possible? We are still struggling with the space and this population where everyone should stay with the family and we do have shortage of space. So imagine a world where everyone stays in their own their apartment. Do you think we have this much space? Exactly. So if all objects start taking their own memory in the, uh, in the RAM or in the memory, do you think the system will sustain? So sharing of the memory or the sharing of the container becomes most important part. So I always say if a person has a great hands on on the pointers, he has a, a great knowledge on how to optimize memory. So in a classroom, when I say suppose we are sharing, so we have 20 people sharing the same classroom. So all of us are sharing the same container called classroom. If someone goes out to get freshen up and someone changes the position, if he was sitting on a fourth row, he comes down and he sits next to the trainer, instructor. So the state of that particular student is changed. And when a, a previous student who went off out of the classroom and enters, he gonna find the student sitting at the different position. So the student position got changed with everyone associated with the classroom. So that's where the sharing comes, that's where the pointer comes. Now, if either one of our student or the one of either of any student or the instructor goes out of the classroom, it doesn't affect the container. Because no one is the owner of that container. But if the owner of the container, the one who owns the, the a partner or classroom, dies or he just vanishes, then that container becomes or that classroom becomes unaccessible to any of us. Any one of us. So that way point out. The owner, if owner dies, the container is out. But in terms of programming language, when a pointer A goes, he also destroys the container. So ownership is given to each and every pointer who gets referred to the container. But there is a mechanism which can control the ownership of the pointers. So if the owner pointer goes out, then only the container is destroyed. Now how it happens, we're gonna see with all these attributes. So we're gonna say I have a NS string, say str1. Suppose NS string str1 has been created and has a value called preamp. Now when you declare a string preamp, a memory block will be created. Like this, say you want to be um, ID will be assigned to the str, so say 2000. Then we have seen ESA, it has some value, it's gonna have some more values, 
there will be Priyank Spring, reference to that, all, all stuff will be there. Now, str one Now, apart from ID and ESA, there is something called retain count. It's an integer value read only. Some people say reference count for a pointer, some people say it's a retain count for the objective C object, some people say RC count. So, because if I say RC count, retain count, so whenever and pointer or an objective C object is created of using a log, always object has always created using a log, the retain count, we say RC count is 1, it's initialized to 1. It indicates it will refer or the owner in a simple term of this container is one object. Now I have say str, so you want to have such type of signature where say str1 has 2000. Sounds perfect. I say n string str2. I declare another string str2. Now I say str2 equal to str1. Is it valid? I think it's valid. We are both are of same type, both are pointers, I can align them. So when I say str2 equal to str1, str2 basically is going to have 2000. And one point. To the same container. Now, it didn't affect anything inside the container. Now, obviously, everyone says alloc opposite is d alloc. I always agree with that. The alloc creates the container, d alloc deletes the container. But always make sure in objectives you never call d alloc on any object. Let d alloc get called automatically. So we will not call d alloc. If you call d alloc, whether how many owners are there inside or are the owners, he won't take into consideration, he will just destroy the container. So there might be some other owners which are referring to this container will never get a container. And they will say a object is pointing to a null container and a system will get crashed. And there where people find difficulties right, with dealing with the pointers because they release a pointer once and they try other point and they try to use another pointer because they have confused with the pointer concept. So now, suppose at some point in time, I say str2 have done his work, he is no more required. So always perform release. Do not call dialog. Never ever call a dialog on any object. Let it get called on its own. Thumb rule for the objective C programming. So I say at some point in time, I say str2 release. Now, what is release? Now release doesn't do anything is great. It will just reduce the routine count by one. Whatever is the current routine count, you're going to reduce by one. So I say routine count is one, minus one, it turns to be zero. And when the routine count of any container or the memory block becomes zero, a dialog gets called. So the container is destroyed. And suppose if you if S1 tries to ex access some of the values, will get crashed because the container or the block of memory is no more exist. Now this is a normal behavior which we see in every programming language. This behavior of a pointer is called assign. So during the assign, when a pointer gets assigned to another pointer, the retained count is not affected. Now you want to see how thing changes when we say retain. So suppose we say a property was retain. So when a retain happens, internally str1 calls retain on its own. So str1 says retain. Now what does retain do? It doesn't do anything special. It just say increase the current retain count by 1. So I say plus 1 equal to 2. So now S2 is also pointing to the same block of memory, but it says there are two owners. So at the same point when it goes, str 2 says, okay, I'm done with my work. So what happens? Minus 1, 1. So we say a pointer is retained. str 1 is retained. So we say retained. Now comes question when to use a sign, when to use retain. It's a simple funda. 
you just have to define two things when you in the real world it's like when a scope and a purpose is over a point the or an object should be out of the ecosystem so when the scope of me and my purpose is over i will be thrown out of the world ecosystem i will be dead similarly when an object purpose and scope is over you should throw that object out of the system now how to do that now suppose str2 purpose or str1 purpose was to create something and finally give its value to the s2 i would say i would use a sign so that i have my purpose is over and when s2 r releases it's over but if you say s1 purpose was one of the purpose was to align the value to the s2 at some point of time but to perform some other work i would have told retain so what happened basically when i retain i give the ownership to the str i retain myself and when str2 is done its work and it releases itself i still my purpose is not over i need to be in my ecosystem so the memory management or the key value for memory management is assign retain the one who uses assign retain properly will make sure the pointers switching happen or the memory is most optimized so when i say retain basically retain count is increased now we want to see copy now copy basically copy basic doesn't work on all type of objectives your object they are only work on those object which confirms the copy protocol so it normally seen there are collection of object is where the copy is applicable like ns print it's a collection of characters like ns array collection of object ns dictionary ns data are all collection of objects so when we say copy basically what happen basically when i say copy so when i say str2 equal to str1 and suppose it been copy a copy is get called now copy physically takes the current state of the container 1 and aligns to the container 2 so basically str2 it's pointing to some other location but it's been initialized with a current state of is a current state of str1 so even if str1 releases or do whatever to its own container it won't affect the str2 basically str1 and str2 are point to different memory location but str2 becomes constant whereas str1 if suppose str1 changes its content from priam to priam 1 to 3 it won't get affected to str2 that's for sure but if if str2 tries to change the content of priam to say priam 1 it will get crashed because this becomes immutable so copy always create immutable copy of an object so one key panda is that whenever you use copy the new object which gets created is immutable so now suppose i want to make str2 mutable so there is no direct property or attribute which you want to do that a person has to call mutable copy explicitly so when you call mutable copy explicitly we will create a new container where str2 will be mutable do not ns string is immutable object but this taking in a it should be ns mutable string but in order to understand just to make things simpler we have used string so assign and retain helps you to manage the pointers so when a when a purpose of a point or an object is to get assigned to something else directly without any thing you have to make sure it's always assigned but if the point or an object which you create has a purpose beyond just for the assignment you have to make sure it has a retain so default between these two is assigned so when a property doesn't have any attribute declared for such thing it consider the pointer or the objective the object to be assigned now but if you practically want to implement in objective c or in x code if you don't declare it, it will give you a warning so default it's assigned 
and you want to have a default value, but then too you have to write assign in your attribute list. So assign retain helps you to maintain the ownership of the pointer, or you can say how ownership will be calculated or the retain count how it will be manipulated depending upon assign and retain. Third set is atomic. non-atomic. Now for atomic and non-atomic it to do with the multi-threaded environment. Now if you want a property or an object to be accessed by the thread in a synchronous way we want say atomic. Whereas if you want an object to be a, to be accessed by the multiple thread in a synchronous manner we want say non-atomic. So in a simple term atomic means synchronized access of the object whereas non-atomic means Asynchronized. 90% of time when we have asynchronous environment multi-threaded, we always want to say non-atomic. But default is atomic. So if you don't declare any set or any of these attributes, you are going to consider atomic. And if you see the libraries, most of the point, uh, most of the properties have non-atomic. So the next set of attribute is strong and weak. Now this set of attribute came to existence with iOS 5.0 or you can say with Xcode 4.0 and above with the inclusion of automatic reference counting ARCs. Now people or the lot of developers have issue with assign and retain. When do you assign, when do you use retain. In order to get rid of those things Apple have come up with a concept of ARC where they say you are not supposed to say retain and release in your code, we are going to maintain it. Now, in simple term, we, ARC is not a part of this, cons, is not a part of this part of tutorial. We would say, when you declare a property as really strong, ARC is going to call retain, it going to replace retain uh, during the assignment. And when you call V, it is going to replace by, you can say, it is going to replace by assign. So, I would say when declared strong, it will treat object which retain type of attribute. When you want to declare V, you're going to treat an objective C of property as a sign. So, with this, so, strong and weak are used only when you enable the automatic reference counting in your project. Now, ARC just take care of retain and release, retain and release and assign. But the retain count only doesn't increase by the retain. It also get increased by a lot of other methods. Who will want to take care of those things? So as a neophyte, I would never suggest you to start with ARC directly. You start with assign retain. You take care of it. Try to understand how retain works. And so that you come to know all your test cases where the retain count increase. So I will drop down with some functions which increase the retain count and I will tell users perform the opposite to maintain the retain count. So we have seen alloc increases the retain count, you have to perform release to re reduce the retain count from which was increased by the alloc. The another function which we have seen was retain, the opposite is release. There is a function called add subview which increases the retain count. You have to perform remove from super view. There is a function called add object. You have remove object at index. There is a function called push view controller. Opposite is pop view controller. There is a function called present model view controller. Opposite is dismiss.
what are you control? So, I have come across in my own five years of experience with iOS these six methods. So basically, whichever method increases the retained count of an objective C object, you have to perform the opposite when within the scope where these functions are written and when the purpose is over. If you maintain these things properly, I would tell you you will never have an issue with the memory management. So it's like ARC just take care of these two sets. What about the remaining four? If you start your career with ARC, I was career with ARC and ARC, you will never understand the retain count funda and you're gonna always have a tough time in managing your memory. So once you get used to it and then you switch to ARC, it will like become easier. You should know what's happening inside the code or how a code behaves. Now ARC is not like a garbage collector inside your Java. ARC is nothing to do with runtime. During the compile time, he gonna see your code depending on strong memory, he gonna inject, release, retain and auto-release for you. So it's all happening at a compile time. Runtime, nothing is changing.